Hey everybody, good morning and happy Saturday. So from here on out, you're just gonna see me as me. Uh, right now, I'm getting ready to go grind and drink this glop shake. But as part of being radically transparent, I am just gonna start answering questions on the fly as I have time. I, I'm not gonna be able to get to all of them all the time, but I will do my best if I see a relevant question. Um, if Ellie can track me down here, we're just gonna answer it. And I feel a lot better today after getting some things off my chest. Um, just know those, those are multi-year things. That's not just now. Um, we've been seeing inconsistencies, but again, from my perspective, inconsistencies based on what we've been trying to achieve. Um, we just didn't have the ability to have these different materials. There was a lot of internal reorganization going on with Bowler Udahom which is now Bowler and Volsalpine on this side of the pond as far as the marketing. Uh, there were many years where I couldn't consistently get stock. Uh, you had to get very, very large amounts uh, from either of the companies where these bigger companies like Microtech and some others where they've, they've had a consistent stock of LMAX that wasn't available to me as a smaller maker without getting uh, basically a whole mill run. Um, so, now these materials are more and more available and we're gonna start using them. So uh, I've been reaching out to these people for years, seeing what's available, what's around, and I can see that their reorganization over in Europe is starting to pay off and as two separate selling entities, uh, they're able to better serve their customers and that I, people like me can start getting involved in this again in a way that makes sense for us. So uh, this morning, we're just gonna answer some questions here. Uh, pardon me, some of these are a little bit long, but we're just gonna read them and I'm gonna respond to them. Uh, Paul Cardenas says, if I'm understanding the gist of what Guy is saying, he's saying the issues with production delay are because of the inconsistencies in the blade materials. He's also saying that he has chosen unproven materials that are new to the market and some that have never been used for knives before. So my question is, if you have a problem with multi-year backlogs, why are you using new and experimental materials? Why are you not using materials that you know deliver tried and true results? Maybe experiment with the new hot steel when your payroll isn't dependent on everything going well. So my response to that is that's exactly what we're doing. This new K90 might be a new thing to the knife industry, but this is not a new grade. And when I'm looking at these different grades and finding different trying to find something analogous to 3AV. On the Udahome side, we had Venetis 4E. It's not quite the same application. So uh, my rep just happened to find some of this Bowler K890, which has been used widely in the tool and die industry, similar to 3AV. Uh, it, it wasn't a knife steel to begin with. It just worked for knives. So this Bowler K890, when the German or the Austrians heard what I wanted to do with it, they were very excited because a lot of the market is stainless steels and they've been putting a lot of their focus on that. But they know this will work. And I know based on these technologies and the precision of these sheets, the composition of the steel, this is going to work. It's the little details in the materials that I'm struggling with and where some things aren't as consistent. For my, my GSO series, we're holding really tight tolerances and to have things grow and move around a little bit, it's not ideal. And sometimes we've had to reevaluate things and it gets a little hairy of trying to put together that nice product that we want for you out of something that the material doesn't align with those specifications. It might perform nice in a knife, but with some of the manufacturing differences between different companies, it's less than ideal for us to work with, which does cause us delays. Then those things snowball. So what we're doing with a wide array of these Bowler and Udahome materials is I am choosing things that I believe in my heart are very consistent and that I'm offering something that is analogous to things that we've been previously offering. Uh, looking at the uh, CPM products, I am still going to be trying to do some of our GSO series stuff with it and I'm gonna fulfill the orders because we've, we've developed some strategies to, to minimize some of these things, but for what I'm shooting for, some of these materials grow in ways where I can't hold tolerances for certain series the way I would like consistently. So we developed a new series with the EDC series and the Vendetta series that 
they're really nice knives, but they have a little built-in tolerance in them. It makes the handles more swappable. It makes them a little more manufacturable. And our, you can see in our price points, they're a little bit lower because they are a little bit easier. I'm, I'm passing that, that little bit of ease along to you in the cost because they are, they're more predictable. We can assemble a lot more of them a day, like a lot more a day of these different series to be able to get knives that I know you're gonna like out in the world in a more predictable way. So if, if you're having that perception, it's only because I'm not explaining it right. I was trying to keep the other video focused really on some of the things I've been seeing and why we're going there. So now we can start talking about it openly and honestly. Um, We'll make another video on it, but people curious about the, you know, making some 5.5s five and 5.3s. Those Magna Cut sheets came in too thin to make the 5.1s that I wanted, and we would have incurred a lot more delay and cost trying to send that back and hoping that the next rolled sheets were within the thickness tolerance that I know will clean up. So we kept it and made the next most appropriate thing out of it so that we can continue moving some things forward. Um, it, it's not productive just shipping things around all the time. So once it's in-house, we figured out what can we do with this reliably, and we did it. So it's a little out of order, but we're trying to keep progress moving forward. But as far as these materials, I, I know this is going to do what I'm expecting. Uh, we're going to have corrosion resistance probably on par with about M4, and wear resistance as good or better than crew wear. Uh, we have a really wide hardenability range that we're starting to test with, but I know we've already got a, a heat treat worked out that is going to perform generally really well, and it's going to make a really nice knife if corrosion resistance isn't your primary concern. Uh, for the corrosion resistance steels, I was using Bowler M390 back in 2013. It was uh, uh, Niagara talked me into using 20CV again, which you'll see some of our 2014 era weather testing and things like that. It's a nice grade. Uh, that product is really nice and in the last 10 years I know they've only done a better job. I believe in that. I stopped using it because the availability was sketchy and I promises were made that this other material produced domestically would be as nice or nicer. Now I've shown you through illustrations and physical examples that that's not always exactly true. So I'm back at M390. Again, LMAX, that's tried and true, baby. That shit performs. Uh, if you look at some of our oldest videos, uh, me out in the woods by myself when this was a one-man band, I'm out beating the hell out of some LMAX knives in the woods. I loved LMAX, I just couldn't get it for a number of years. Uh, the rep that I thought I was talking to, every year it, they kind of had the same couple of weird sheets in stock that were odd, and uh, we just didn't have the ability to get these things. Now that we do, we're moving forward in a productive manner that I know that we can make a nice thing that you're going to enjoy without me going crazy in here. Um, so I think I covered everything there. Uh, things are going much better. Uh, so should we make another video or we're going to cut this up? All right, we're just going to make another video uh, to answer the next question because I talk a lot. Uh, so anyway, we'll see you again here in a second. Hi guys, I was just re-watching the video uh, that Guy did and getting ready to post it and I realized that he did miss a little bit of information about the Magna Cut, talking about, you know, just diving into these new things that we don't know much about. Um, and with the Magna Cut, we did actually do a small initial batch uh, to get an initial, just figuring out how it works and that if it was going to be a good steal. And uh, we had some issues with it that caused some minor warping and bowing and so they did take a lot more work for us to get them done uh, but they came out beautifully so that's where we doubled down we ended up sending that large heat treat batch over 800 knives and because Peter's heat treat is also focusing on trying to get blades to be flat that's where they introduced that stress relieving step that they did not do on the first batch which led to the decarburization issue um, so we did initially do a small batch. We thought everything was going well and it, you know, it's just part of learning this new steel and figuring things out. Um, so by doing smaller batches, we can, if there is a new steel, we can learn it on something that's much smaller. It's not going to be so many knives that we lose. So we are learning. We're always trying to improve, do things better. And part of moving here is just making it easier to do smaller batches to and from Peters and just trying to be better. So yeah, have a good day.